games. Kerry are going to be amongst those qualifiers. We will see though if Kerry had the best game and we will let you know during the week which match we will have next Saturday. Throw in time to be confirmed. Here's the score breakdown. Kerry winning by a single point against Sligo. 14 points to a goal in 10. And of course, the misses for Sligo. How they will rue the misses, particularly that penalty miss, and the amount of wides and the amount of shots that dropped in short. The chances were there for Sligo, despite the fact of having less possession to win this game. Peter, should Sligo have won this? Well, uh, they had their chances, and uh, they'll be bitterly disappointed that 12 wides you know, tells its own story. But, uh, you know, who would have thought, you know, this is the second week in a row that, that Kerry have been humbled by lesser opposition. Uh, Sligo were a Division 4 side. They played their football, league football Division 4 this year, and it was Kerry who were hanging on uh, by their fingernails at the end of the game. But uh, I think a bit of uh, composure and a, and a bit of creativity up front was all that Sligo were, were missing. David Jelly, who was first class in the first half, uh, in the second half, you know, he wasn't creating the chances or uh, really had him in his pocket for, for most of the game. But the, yes, they, they had enough ball in the second half uh, and their decision making here again. Sean Davey uh, either kicking it over the bar or laying it off was the better option. But time after time at the crucial stages, they, they done that. So yes, uh, moral victory goes to, to Slego, but a big opportunity missed. And David, when it came to the penalty, you were actually shouting in here to put it over the bar at that stage of the game. Why? Because the whole thing behind it is you're showing the amount of confidence you have and saying, right, we don't mind being one point behind. Like, Sligo, it was a great run by Jonathan Ivey, who was absolutely fantastic, I thought. You know, he's become of age today and the runs he made forward. The speed of him, you know, took him ahead of the players and he was taken down and it was a penalty. But when you have six minutes left, if you put the ball over the bar, I know you can say, right, a goal would have won it. You think with all the soccer players that happens, like, oh, you know, I wouldn't blame Paul Kelly on it. Yeah. But the thing was, they'd be a point down, but there was five and a half minutes still to play, and Sligo had the momentum. No. I just think it's such a big decision to get it or to miss it. But to miss it, you, you always lose the game. Yeah, well, always. of course it's a big decision, but um, uh, I think he's, he had to go for a goal. They were playing against the Breeze. Um, Kelly's a confident player. Um, I, I it wasn't a confident penalty, though, was well, it? Well, I think he'd done the right, he made the right decision. By, by going for a goal. My God, that Kerry, you know, if that penalty had went in, Sligo would have won the game. So I think he made the right decision. Uh, goalkeeper made a good save, albeit he hit it at, at the wrong height again. I think the best way to beat Dermot Murphy is low, keep it on, on, on the ground. So uh, the other thing that what the penalty did show again, of course, was the lack of, of pace in the centre of, of the Kerry defence. There's no way should, you know, a wing half back come straight through the middle of your defence. And, and, numer and numerous times it happened cap. all day. They said, once the Kerry guy's seen the likes of Jonathan Navy on the ball, foul him 40 yards out, 50 yards out, break the ball down there and don't let them go forward. Now, Joe Kernan did pick Paul Galvin as man of the match. We'll be talking to him in a minute. Let's just see a little bit of the things that Paul Galvin gave to Kerry on his return after suspension. Well, he, he was always uh, a threat, even from the very start. He was one player. I think Paul let, uh, felt after the, the court game in which he was sent off, he, he was you know badly let down, and uh, he was determined to prove a point today. And by God, he, he done it. Driving surge and runs. Um, but what he also done, he was able to win his own his own kickouts. You know, and for someone uh, not the biggest in the half forward line, uh, great spring, great determination to, to fetch his own ball time after time. Yeah, like in all fairness, I have to put my hand up. You know, it's great to see a, a player like this and at, at what he's gone through and the criticism he's got to come out and produce the goods by playing football. Um, any decision today that was went his way, he deserved it. Like at the end of the day, it, it takes, I, I think it's hard, rough and tough players to win the game. Curry are not nice fellas and Paul Gavin is a pure example of a, of a rough and tough footballer. OK, well, let's hear from the man of the match, Paul Galvin. Well, congratulations, Paul Galvin. You are our GA man of the match. Sean Walsh, Vice Chairman of the Munster Council, is here now to present you with your award. Paul, the skin of your teeth. What was it like out there? Was there much panic in the Kerry team? Um, yeah, we, we were, it was probably a bit too close for comfort, but I don't think there was any panic at any stage because, you know, the, the, the kind of the buzzword at halftime was not to panic by, by Jack. And, and we knew, you know, given the way we came into the game, that, you know, we haven't been firing on all cylinders and that it might, it might be a dogfight and it turned out that way. So. I think it wasn't so much panic, but you know, we were definitely hanging on. But Paul, what everyone wants to know is why aren't you firing at all cylinders? I don't know. I'm not too sure, really. Or so we're, we're just trying to find a bit of form. I think, I think you know, possibly we've been on the road a, f a few years together, and um, you know, we're just we're just looking for that bit of form. But I mean, you know, the qualifiers are, are always tough games, and I don't think there's ever an easy game in the qualifiers. And these Sligo team, I watched them play Galway, and they were very unlucky not to beat Galway. So I mean. You know, like no, you're probably being we're probably being disrespectful to Sligo in a way because they're quite a good team, you know. You said there you've been on the road for a while. Is mental fatigue a factor? I don't think so. Not for me anyway. I, I haven't been on the road in a while, so 
I don't use that big a factor personally, but I mean, yeah, well, I know, we, we, we brought in legs towards the end that made Daniel Bohan and Darren Sullivan, you know, brought a bit of freshness to it in the second half, and uh, I don't think so, I don't think so. It's just, it's just, you know, just got to fight, fight, our, fight our way out of it and keep, keep going and, and find our form, you know? Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Thanks very much. Well, Peter and David will be telling us why Kerry aren't firing on all cylinders straight after this.